Aloha! My name is Michael Takemoto and I'm a visual artist and I also teach art at the University of Hawaii Maui College. And today what I'd like to do is to share one of my paintings with you and also to talk about one of the visual elements that I've incorporated into that painting. So let's take a look at the painting. So this painting is entitled Pu'uloa and it's ink on paper, so it's three pieces of paper which I've mounted to a silk scroll. And this format is very traditionally done by a lot of um, Asian artists, and it's something that I've developed uh, with the series of scroll paintings that I've been working on. Um, once again, the title is Pu'ulo, and it's based on a location on the Big Island of Hawaii. And this is located at the Hawaii Volcano National Park. Um, so what I'm doing with this piece is I'm using the idea of aerial perspective to create an illusion of three-dimensional space. So how do you create three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface? And what I've done is used aerial perspective. And with aerial perspective, when objects or things are closer to you, they're much more sharper and in focus and have more detail. And if and as things recede in the distance, they get a little bit softer in value, and they often get a little bit blurrier as well. So I think you can see this um, down below here, where you can see a lot more details in the landscape. And by the way, this landscape here is filled with thousands and thousands of petroglyphs that the Hawaiians carved out into the lava fields there, which makes us a very, very special and unique place. Um, and in the background is the slopes of Kilauea, the volcano Kilauea. So this is what I use to help to create that illusion of depth on a two-dimensional surface. Um, so my question to you is, when you're doing your next landscape drawing or painting, how will you incorporate aerial perspective in your work? Hope to see you soon. Aloha and mahalo. Let's create our own work of art using aerial perspective. We're going to need three sheets of paper that are the same color and the same size. You can also take one piece of paper and cut it into three pieces. We'll need a pencil, a sharpie, and a black crayon. We're going to make a scroll. One of these pieces we're going to save for later. It'll be the sky. The other ones will be the foreground and the background. I'm going to think of somewhere I know that I can see a long distance. I'm thinking of high up on Haleakala, like if I'm driving to the lavender farm or up to the summit, all those pastures and there's some trees. So I made some hills there. And then for the background, the part that I can see far in the distance, from these pastures, I can see the West Maui Mountains. I'm thinking, what's the shape of them? Going down to Kakalo ahead, around past Waihe'e, Kahului, towards Paia. I just drew this very lightly with pencil. I'm going to add Sharpie just to the foreground. That part's close up, so it's going to have more detail. And I can add more details in than what I do with pencil, just like Mike Takemoto has in his. And so those little marks there is going to make the foreground pop up. I'm going to erase any little pencil lines that show up. And then I'm going to do the background. This is when we use the crayon. I'm going to color very carefully, lightly in one direction, filling in the whole background on that paper and then on the foreground paper there's still a little bit of the background coming right up to where the sharpie is. Now it gets interesting. I am going to use this pencil to color some areas darker, some areas lighter, but the top of every hill I'm going to leave just the color of the paper. I am using value, lights and darks, to make this look three-dimensional to give depth. We're having a feeling of space in this artwork. And so see how it's dark in the bottom of the hills and in the trees? All of this is making that foreground have shape to it. And we're going to be able to see how this all comes together. Let's lay this out like it's going to be a scroll, just like Mike Takamoto's. 
if we're going to make this into a scroll, we need to connect these papers together. So we need a bigger piece of paper. Any paper that's larger than what we made works. But if you don't have anything, a grocery bag works great. Just need to cut it open. Find the seam, the spot where it's been glued together. See that little tab there? That's a good place to cut. You're going to cut straight down that part and then cut out that base. We're going to take that part off. The great thing about a grocery bag is that even if it has prints on the outside of it, the inside is going to be a plain surface. Lay out your colored papers on the background paper so you know how much you need. I'm using a ruler to mark off where I'm going to cut. I'll have a lot of paper to use for future projects. We'll see about that later. Now, this piece here, I'm going to lay out the pieces again, get them exactly how I want, and then I'm going to use a glue stick. With a glue stick, you want to cover the whole paper. Check where you want it, and then press it down. Check those corners. Make sure everything's stuck. With a glue stick, you can use a lot of glue. If you're using white glue, dot, dot, not a lot, and spread it around with your fingers. Put them down where you want them. Check the corners, and keep on going and wow this is going to be so amazing one thing i noticed is that i looked at it one more time when i thought it was done and i wanted that background to be just a tiny bit darker always look at your pieces one more time and see what you notice and that extra attention creates beautiful artwork how is your aerial perspective artwork coming along? I can't wait to see it.